Good Sunday morning to each of you that's tuned in this morning to the March of Faith Community Church service that's airing via the airways. We thank God for each of you that's listening. But as we go, we're going to lift our prayer unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all glory because all glory and honor belong to you. We thank you for this day that you have made. We have vowed in our hearts and our mind that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we just love you today. We thank you. We lift you. We magnify you for who you are in our lives. We thank you that you hold us up daily, God, even when we forget about you. You still have us on your mind, and we thank you for it. We bless your name, oh God. Be with us as we go through this day and go through this pandemic. God, keep us in the palm of thy hands. And Lord, we lift you up. We give you all the glory, all the praise, which is honor and do you. We thank you for it. We ask that you look about our pastor this morning, Bishop Sorrell. Lift him up, oh God. Continue to feed him, that he might continue to feed your flock. We thank you for him. Lord, we ask that you will cover him under your precious blood. We give you the glory for him. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We give you thanks. You said give thanks in all things, for this is your will concerning us. So we give you glory and praise, God. We thank you. We thank you that we're able still to come together in fellowship, love and love. We thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise, and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and thanks. Amen. What's going on, everybody? My name is Chakra. My name is Adrian. And together we are Lasco. We are so excited to be worshiping with you this morning, March of Faith Community Church. Thank you so much for considering us, and uh, we count this as a privilege to do our best to lead you into his presence. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. Obviously, we're worshiping via the screen, and so we're acting as director, producer, sound engineer. So if you see us, you know, reaching out to push buttons, it's because we just want to create the best experience as we can, that we can, sorry, uh, for us to worship and more importantly for him to get the yeah. glory. First song up is going to be I Got My Freedom. It's a declaration. So wherever you are, where if you're sitting down, I want you to jump to your feet and just shout out, I got, I got my freedom. My freedom. Let's worship.
to praise in this place. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Now, we pray that you have your freedom. And if you don't, we pray that at the end of this worship set, you will have just that, your freedom. And how do we get our freedom? Through the one who died on the cross for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord yes. and Savior. He made available healing and deliverance. And with that comes freedom. So the next song we're going to sing is entitled No Greater Love. Mm -hmm. And the sentiments of the song just talks about the greater, greatest love that we could ever find. And that is found in Jesus, Jesus Christ. It's our new single that's out on all digital platforms. When you're done worshiping, you can check that out. But it's a, more about worshiping him right now in this moment. So wherever you are, just slip your hands up. We're going to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
Bible tells us that neither height nor depth, anything, nothing can separate us from the love that is in Jesus Christ. And so although within our human nature we can never fully reciprocate the love that God gave to us, we're going to do our very best while here on earth. So right where you are, I want you to lift your hands and declare from your mouth, there is no greater love. Story to you today. Jesus went to Calvary. Oh, to save a rent like you and me. No greater, 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 no greater. to me, finds me when I'm lost, mm. oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, wow, no greater love, no greater love, than the love of our God, if you're thankful for the love of God, I just want you to lift your hands and bless him, hallelujah, just lift your hands and magnify him. He is good. He is faithful. Yes, he, he is sovereign. And he is in love with you. And because of his love, guess what? You have the victory. Amen. We're about to sing this last song. Thank you so much, March of Faith Community Church, for having us. This is a declaration. You might know this song. So if you know it, I want you to put down your breakfast. I want you to get up out of your bed, jump off of your sofa, and just shout, I got my victory. I got my victory. Yes, victory in Jesus, of course. Hallelujah.
Oh, hallelujah. No. Thank you for your victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Victory looks good on you. We want to thank you one more time for having us. It's been such an honor and a privilege to worship with you today. Enjoy the rest of your service, and we pray that we can see you physically someday soon. Blessings. God bless you. This is Bishop Sorrell. Thank you for tuning in to the March of Faith uh, Community Church broadcast. We appreciate you listening in and tuning in on today. We're going to go to the throne of grace for a word of prayer. Father God, we love you. We thank you for all things. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Oh God, you woke us up this morning and started us on our way. And we say thank you for that. We could have been dead and sleeping in our grave, but you gave us another chance to lift you up. You gave us another chance to praise you. You gave us another chance to hear your word and take it in and spread the gospel to every man. God, touch us right now. Let us hide your word inside of our heart so that we don't sin against you, oh God. We bind depression and oppression right now in the name of Jesus. We bind confusion and fear and lose peace and love in the household of the march of faith. God, we thank you for all things. We claim these things as done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, we thank God for you and we thank you for tuning in. Uh, we want to let you know that we love you and that we miss you. And that even in this particular time where all, uh, see, things seem to be going haywire and things, lots of confusion seem to be going on, God is still on the throne may not seem like like it and you may not feel like it but God is on the throne he is handling the controls and things are uh, working out as they should work out we're going to go to the scripture on today uh, our scripture today, today is coming from Ephesians the third chapter and the 20th verse that's Ephesians the third chapter and the 20th verse and if you could uh Put your finger in your King James, and then we may read a little bit out of the uh, Amplify also. But that's Ephesians, the third chapter, in the 20th verse. And it reads, and it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask, or think according to the power that worketh in us. I'll read that again. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Amen to the, our key scripture on today. And I was thinking about God gave me, he said, you know, a lot of times uh, when we have these uh, things come up, I, it seems like our dream is dead or, or the thing that God, the thing that God has put on the inside of us that he said he was going to do, it seemed like that thing is dead and it's not going to happen and it's not going to come to pass. And if you listen to the devil and if you listen to the world, if you listen to your relative, you listen to the people around you, it may seem like that your dream or your thing that God has put inside of your heart is dead and it's not going to happen. But I got news for you. I came to tell you today that that thing is going to happen. That thing is going to come to pass because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask. So sometimes our dream is actually too small and, and, and we need to enlarge the size of our dream. And sometimes God put us in a position where he don't show us everything because if he showed us, showed us how big the dream was and if he showed us exactly where he was taking us, we would get scared. And we would be ready to turn around and say, oh, God, well, I, I don't know if I'm able to do that. And I don't know if I'm qualified for that. But how many of you know that you don't have to be qualified? God is the one who is qualified. So we know that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. I'm going to read that in the Amplified, if that's all right. In the Amplified Bible, it says, now to him who is able to carry out his purpose. So 
first of all, it has to be in his purpose or in his will. Whatever God is working out, whatever dream he has given you is inside of his will. And it says, uh, do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think. So sometimes you dare, sometimes when you're a little kid and you go uh, go to your, your dad after you get a certain age, you get between the ages of 10 and 17, you know, you kind of know, know your parents a little bit and uh, you go and ask them something and, and, and you, you're afraid to ask them for what you really want, what's really on your heart. God is saying, what's really on your heart? What's what, what is the dream really? Because whatever that dream really is, what you really got in your heart, the dream is much bigger than that. And I got something bigger than that. And I got something exceeding and a super abundant bigger than that than what you're looking at, what you're thinking about, what's inside of your heart, what's inside of your mind. I got something bigger than that for you. All you got to do is believe it. And it says, more than we dare to ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams. So beyond your dreams and your prayers and all of those things, God got something bigger than that for you. Somebody say bigger than that. According to his power that is at work within us. So that same power that was working inside of Jesus, that same love that was working inside of Jesus, that same spirit that was working inside of Jesus is working inside of you. That same power that was inside of Jesus, that same love that was inside of Jesus, that same thing that was in Jesus that gave him the go ahead and gave him the move out spirit is inside of you. And it'll work if you let it. Hallelujah, anyhow. And it says here, it says, according to his power that is at work within us. I was uh, sitting at my desk and I began to think uh, about the Ezekiel, I think it's the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, about the dead, uh, dead bone, uh, dry bones, the dry bones. And uh, I thought about how God took Ezekiel out into the valley of the dry bones. How many know a valley is a depressed place? A valley is a place of uh, where dread and fear is. The valley is a depressed and a down place. And sometimes of some of us may be in a down place and a depressed place at this moment. And the devil may be trying to depress you and confuse you at this moment. And you may be in the valley of the dry bones. And he said to uh, Ezekiel, uh, uh, these bones are very dry. They weren't just dry and dead. They was very dry. We mean in brittle and about to break up. And if you stepped on them, they would have just fell apart. And some of our dreams and hopes is like that. If anybody say anything about what we dream and what we hope, we didn't have so many things happen to us. We have had so much opposition. We have had so many things come against us. We have had the enemy hit us so hard. It seems like that our dream and our vision is about to break apart. But it says here in, in the uh, a scripture that God is able to do a seemingly abundant. So in that valley of the dry bones where we're walking, where it seems our dreams are about to be brittle. And he said to Ezekiel, he said, son of man or mortal man, can these bones live? Can this dream live? Can this vision live? Can what you dreaming about come to pass? And Ezekiel turned to him and said, Lord, you know, thou knowest, oh Lord, you, you know what's going on. You know, you know what's happening here. You know that these bones is dry. You know that uh, my husband ain't thinking about being saved. You know that my children ain't thinking about being saved. God, you know whether they can, uh, uh, whether these dry bones can get up out and live again. Only you know, God, only you know, only you know. What can happen here? Only you know how to bring this thing back to life. And I thought about that and I said, wow. I said, you got them uh, walking over the valley of the dry bones and sometimes we walking over the valley of our dreams and it just seems like that thing is not going to happen. Is it, nobody, nobody a year ago could have said, uh, oh, okay, well, we're going to be uh, in, a, in a pandemic and we're going to be, you know, uh, locked in our houses for a certain period of time. And if God had given you something, some of y'all thought that y'all dream would already be to come to pass and you'd be on your way. But God said, no, I got another plan. 
He said, I know the plans in Jeremiah 29. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. I came to give you, uh, 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 in Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, for I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you. I came to give you uh, peace. I came to give you a future. I came to give you an expected end. When he said these things in Jeremiah 29, the, the, uh, the Israelites had been captured and in captivity and their minds was captured and their spirits was captured and their souls was captured and everything was down when he came and brought this word. I know the plans that I have for you. I got a plan for you. It's to give you hope, to give you a future. It's not a plan of disaster, but it's a plan of that you're going to make it. It's a plan that's bigger than what you're looking at. It's a plan and a dream bigger than the vision that you dreamed about. The plan is big. The vision is big. Somebody said, write the vision, make it plain. And some of us have wrote the vision three times, got it in three different journals. I got a little journal that I keep uh, for, my for my grandchildren so that they can uh, get a chance to look at it. And when, when, they, when I'm gone on, because, you know, you can't live forever. So then when I'm gone on, they can look at it and say, oh, man, Grandpa went through this too. Grandpa went through some things, and God brought him out on the other side. I want to make sure that they know that God can bring you out on the other side, no matter what and how hard the situation is. If you trust God, believe God, God is able. So that I, I write in this little journal, you know, uh, the things that I go through, and then I write, I keep little mementos from when God bring, you know, bring us out. And, you know, if I, whether it was a financial problem, whether it was sickness, whatever it was, I keep a little memento. Sometimes I keep the little memento down in my drawer, you know, so that not only they can remember, but so that I remember what God did for me. So that I remember when God brought me out. So that I remember that God is able, no matter how tough the situation and no matter how it looked, that God is able to bring me out. So God is going to give us a future. And he has a plan for us. And all we got to do is follow him and trust him and believe in him. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said it? Did God not say it? Did God say he would do it? If he said he would do it, it don't matter what it looked like. It don't matter what people say. It don't matter uh, what it seemed like. If God said it, he is able to do it. It's going to happen. All you got to do is wait on it. All you got to do is trust him. If you listen to me and you listen under the sound of my voice and you're saying, well, I don't know, you know, I don't know if God can do this and I, I don't know if God is able. I come to tell you, I, I'm a living witness that God is able to do what he said he is able to do. He's not a man that he should lie. If he told you that, that's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. You just got to trust him. You got to trust him. You got to believe that he's able to do it. If you're listening to me and you're not saved on today, the Bible uh, only speaks to the unsaved man. It tells you you need to be saved. You need to make uh, Jesus Lord of your life first. See, nothing comes, no, no revelation comes to you out of the Bible until you make Jesus Lord of your life. And when you make Jesus Lord of your life, the Spirit open up your eyes so that you're able to see what direction you need to go and you're able to see what the word is saying to you. So it says uh, that God is able to do exceedingly abundant above all we ask or whatever we thinking. Sometimes we get caught up in our own thoughts. We get caught up in what we're thinking and we get caught up. We have to be careful not getting caught up in our, uh, what we see. Our thoughts uh, sometimes are controlled by what we see. And we can't let what we see, because, you know, what you, what you see may not be what's really going on. Sometimes what you see, your eyes play tricks on you. Your flesh play tricks on you and say, oh, man, this is a bad situation. You're not going to get out of this. Oh, this is too big. This is, this is big. This is way over what you thought it was going to be. These people ain't going to let you do this. This is not going to happen. This situation is too big, so you can't go by what you see. 
You got to go by faith. You got to go by what God is saying. What, have, what did the Lord say about it? What is God saying about it? What did he say about it? He has the last word. Whatever man say, let every man be a lie and God be what? The truth. So what is, what is God saying about it at the end of the day? He has the last word. No matter what man say and, 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 and what he do and how they try to block you, that won't matter. What God says is what's going to come to pass. I've had people try to block me, try to trip me up, try to get things done, try to get projects done. And people that you thought was in your corner or thought what you was helping out was trying to stab you in the back. You know, going around and, and trying to say, oh, he can't do that, or he, she can't do this, or oh, that ain't going to never happen. And, oh, no, I don't even know why they still believe in that. And they are joking and laughing behind your back. But God has said, what did I say? Didn't I say that I was able to do it? Somebody right now got something, a dream and a vision that God then gave him. The folks been laughing behind your back saying that it ain't going to happen, that it's not possible. You ain't qualified. <laughs> you not you not qualified for that. You you not able to do that. You not in position. You not in position to do that. Let me tell you about position. Uh, God is able to take you from one spot to another spot. Yeah, you may not be in position, but you don't have to be in in position. God can put you in position to be blessed. Sometimes God, God likes it. It's, it's something about him that he likes things when, you know, they, when he has to be the all in all, when he has to be depended upon. He waits till everything just die and, and the bottom fall out. God is just like that. Now, if you, if you listen, somebody's listening to me today and the bottom done fell out. It's over with. The, somebody that said no, or it's just over, the bottom of dropped out, and it seemed like it was all over with, and you basically, you know, it was all over but the shouting, right? God is the one who is able to bring back dead dreams, exceeding and abundant above all you ask or think. Dead dreams, dead situations, people don't walked out on you. Said they wasn't coming back. God is the one who's able to bring them back. He waits till the thing is dead and, and everybody say, no, that's not going to happen. It's over. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to do nothing. We can't do nothing for you. No, we can't help you on your rent. No, we can't help you, you know, do this project that you're trying to do. And God will wait till everything just drop out and he'll say, okay, go over here and go, go do this here. Go that way. So that's why you have to listen to the sound of God's voice and say, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Because what the Spirit is saying negate everything else that everybody else is saying. Other people may be saying it ain't possible. And everybody else is saying nay, 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 nay. But the Spirit is saying, yes, I'm going to do it. And that's that scripture in Jeremiah, the reason why I like that particular scripture is because uh, they had been through so much and everything was depressed. And, you know, he said, I'm not going to uh, put you in, God said, I'm not going to put you in a position of disaster. After this disaster is over, the blessing is coming. After the disaster is over, is, is after this disaster has passed, you're going to get exceeding and abundant. Even sometimes while the disaster is going on, God is setting us up for a blessing. Even while situations are happening and things are coming up and we seem to be, you know, mind all confused and things going left and right. God, I don't know what's happening, but I'm trusting you. Even while that's going on, God is setting you up for a blessing. Somebody say set up for a blessing. This is a good setup for a blessing. I'm being set up. So that God can come through. I'm being set up so that God can show himself big. I'm being set up so that God can show himself his magnitude. I'm being set up so that God can show his glory. I'm being set up so that God can come through for me. We're going to go to the throne of grace for a word of prayer. Father God, we love you and we thank you for this day. Touch us right now in the name of Jesus. 
Let us hide your word inside of our hearts so that we won't sin against you, oh God. God, that vision that seemed dead seemed like dry bones in a depressed valley. But right now, in the name of Jesus, we claim life. We claim uh, breath to come into that dream. We can't claim sinew and muscle to come to that dream. We claim finance to come to that dream so that dream can come true right now in the name of Jesus. God, we don't see it, but we trust in you to bring it to pass. That thing that you put inside of our heart is even bigger than we see. Help us to not have fear. Fear didn't come from you, oh God. If we have fear and we confuse, we know it didn't come from you. Because you didn't give us the spirit of fear, but you gave us power. You gave us love and you gave us a sound mind. Even through the weakness in our body. Touch us right now, oh God. You said you was going to heal us. We believe it and we holding on to it. You said you was going to bless our finances. We believe it and we holding on to it. We holding on to every word that you said that you would do for us. God, we thank you for doing it. And we claim it as done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. This is Bishop Sorrell. I love you on today. And I hope that the word bless you. Remember that God is on the throne. And have faith in God. Hello, family. We would like to thank you for your continued charitable support. If you would like to sow into the March of Faith Community Church, please note the following ways to give. One, mail contributions to P.O. Box 999, Carbondale, Illinois, 62902. Two, cash app to Midwest SG. Three, Venmo to Midwest SG. Thank you again and may God bless you.